Ever wonder what goes on behind the scenes of your favorite woodworking magazines? I did. That's why we packed our bags and headed out to Connecticut for a visit to the one and only Taunton Press. Well, here we are at the Taunton Press, publisher of your favorite magazine and mine, Fine Woodworking. It's a pretty cloudy, overcast, rainy day, so uh, we've got to hustle up and get inside before it starts raining. Uh, but we've got some great things in store for you, so let's go inside and check it out. Taunton has a proud history dating back to 1975. That's two years before I was born. And that's a lot of magazines between then and now. Amazingly, it all started in this humble little house. So who better to bring us up to speed on the history of the company than one of Taunton's own senior team members? Hi, my name is Hol Birkin, publisher of Fine Woodworking. We're here in my shop in Oxford, Connecticut. Well, the, the legend goes that uh, Paul Roman uh, was uh, working for GE, and then he was also an uh, amateur woodworker, mm -hmm. and he just loved the craft, but he couldn't find much good information on, on woodworking. So he decided to take a chance and start a little, small magazine with his wife, Jen. And... Uh, they started this little magazine and it just it just expanded and got bigger and bigger. Before they knew it, they had a they had a full full fledged publishing company. Wow. Uh, they started back in 1975. It was a quarterly, black and white, uh, but now it's uh, seven times a year, full color, uh, website. You know, four other magazines, books, videos. Wow. So very successful company. With over 300 employees, five magazines, and countless books and DVDs, the Taunton Press is indeed successful. So after 30 years in a relatively slow-moving industry like woodworking, how does Taunton keep things fresh? I'm Asa Christiana. I'm the editor of Fine Woodworking Magazine. That's a huge challenge. That's sort of one of our biggest challenges. And we kind of have a five-year rule, and that is if we've covered a topic more than five years ago, we feel like it's fair game, that there's enough new woodworkers entering the market um, that we can cover it again. Mm -hmm. uh, we would have to because there is a finite amount of topics unless you get so far out into the esoteric really margins of stuff that only a few people would care about. So we have kind of a five-year rule. You know that said uh, when we do it again and we mm -hmm. did it seven years ago let's say we better do a new twist on it and certainly with a new author who's got a new take on it and bring something new to the table. So that's sure. kind of how we get around that. With this much woodworking history under their belts, this was a place I just had to explore. Let's take a whirlwind tour of the entire facility. One of the really nice things about the offices here at Fine Woodworking is the small gallery of really beautiful furniture we have, uh, all of which has been made by our authors for articles in the magazine over the years. Uh, everything from this very large entertainment center in, I believe that's Pear. Uh, we have a, a small desk and with a slide out drawer for computer keyboard. Uh, very nice green and green style table. Another very lovely uh, piece, small cabinet with some very beautiful uh, hand wrought pulls. Yeah, beautiful pulls. Um, round dining table uh, that was in the magazine not too long ago. And two of my favorites. This is a recreation of Thomas Jefferson's traveling writing desk that Lon Schleining, who's one of our longtime authors, did after looking at the original in the Smithsonian for just years and years. If we turn the piece around, you can see some very, very, very thin partitions and some really tiny little V-shaped wow. dovetails to hold it all together. Incredible. I remember Lon in the article was amazed that 18th century woodworkers, you know, could, could get it that fine. Yeah, look at the hand, hand done dovetails. Yes. And finally, we have um, a segmented turning um, that was done for our 25th anniversary. 
And the reason it was done for the 25th anniversary is because a bowl exactly of this design was on volume one, number one, the very first issue of Fine Woodworking. And one of our longtime readers thought it would be really cool to do it all over again for the silver anniversary. Awesome. We've published close to 200 issues of Fine Woodworking. Uh, this is our library where we keep extra office copies of just about every issue in that lineup. Some of the very early ones are kind of hard to come by. We're here in the biggest shop room at Fine Woodworking, kind of an all-purpose area where the editors from Fine Woodworking as well as from Fine Home Building build props for articles that need to be photographed. They build some of their own projects and occasionally will uh, build something for an article start to finish. Uh, it's a terrific space and very versatile um, and I think very well equipped. We've got a sanding station that we built ourselves, uh, connect, again connected to its own little shop vac for dust control, um, drill press, uh, router table, and for people who are vertically challenged, uh, hollow chisel mortiser, big bandsaw, little bandsaw, um, wide planer, 12 inch jointer, smaller planer that gets a lot of use. That's, um, it's running almost all the time. Um, oscillating spindle sander, a uh, bunch of routers in various states of undress, and a saw stop table saw uh, with uh, an outfeed table that we built. Actually, we just rebuilt that one. Again, this, this gets used for um, building props, for photographs. Uh, that uh, wall and the tool holders has been in innumerable photographs in fine, wood, fine woodworking and fine home building. Sharpening station, um, water stones, some diamond stones. Tormek slow speed grinder, um, and apparently a uh, brand new bench grinder. That's good to see. Okay. We have a um, set of large racks against one wall here where we can store wood that's being used for props. And it's also space for editors here to keep their own projects. After a very enlightening tour, we set out to learn a little bit more about the process of creating an article. Hi, uh, my name is Mark Schofield. I'm the managing editor here at Fine Woodworking. And one of the questions we get asked is, how do I get published in Fine Woodworking? And the answer is that you send a proposal to us. And uh, it can either come in by mail or it can come in by email. Uh, but what happens is they all come to me and I do the initial vetting. And there's various um, factors that determine whether something would make a suitable article for us or whether it would uh, um, not fit the magazine. If I think that it would be a possibility of an article, what I do is I send it out to all the other editors and it's what's called a, uh, a yellow jacket, we, we call them YJs, and it goes around and all the editors write their comments on the outside and as you can see you know sometimes everybody likes the article um, with other ones uh, it's not so popular so uh, every uh, oh two or three weeks we have an editorial meeting where we discuss these and come to a conclusion I would guess that I get uh, probably two to three a day Wow. Um, of which probably, uh, I would say, three or four per week, I actually circulate. Okay, thanks to everybody for coming to this uh, YJ meeting. Uh, the first uh, proposal we have is from Garrett Hack on different ways to cut a bead. It was really cool to watch this meeting. After Mark introduces the article idea, the group brainstorms the topic and decides if it's a keeper. Once the decision is made, the article goes to one of the editorial staff. What we have is kind of the best of both worlds. We 
get the ideas and the info from outside, but we send our own staff, our own trained editor slash photographers out to shoot those photos and we uh, at the person's shop. So the person writing for us um, doesn't need to shoot the photos. That's a big misconception that people think when they submit an idea that they have to have these magazine ready photos and they're intimidated because ours looks so beautiful and and that's all because editors get on a plane with a portable light kit and umbrellas and a camera. This is what they do all the time. People are out of the office at least a quarter of the time traveling the uh, North America mostly to get these photos that you see appear in the uh, magazine. My name is John Tetro and I'm the assistant art director here. Basically the editor will go out to the author shop and uh, they'll get the story, bring it back into the office here and we get a package that looks something like this. We call it a blue folder. And so we'll get a package of photo ins and photo outs and we have all kinds of goodies in here to choose from when we start to lay out. So I'll grab one of those and I'll read through the article and try to understand, you know, get the grasp of it and, and start laying it out. So something like this, I'll take all the measurements from the actual plane we're building and I'll do a drawing to scale. Um, and it kind of makes it easier if we do send out the illustrations to an illustrator. Um, he has more of an idea of what we're asking for. Okay. So I'll scan these in, put them in the article as things are getting laid out. And this was kind of a fun one for me personally because just to make sure everything was right as far as dimensions, um, you know, I brought in some stock from home and went out into the shop and got to build one myself just to see. So this is kind of what I came up with my version. I'm still kind of working on different kind of uh, handles for it, but it's kind of a work in progress, but they work, they work really well. Now we all know about Fine Woodworking's magazine, but what about the online content? Hi, I'm Gina Eide and I work um, as an assistant editor on Fine Woodworking's website. The magazine, um, as soon as it's sent to the printers, okay. that's when we get a PDF. And I have to go through the PDF and I figure out which images I want to use um, to represent any given article. And then I start figuring out how to lay out the article online. Um, um, another cool feature is that we always try to use the technology of the web to make any given subject to add more depth to it. So for example, we had this article by Mark Edmondson on um, a bent, and it was cool because online we can have a video on the cord seat, and then we can also have a finishing. We have like a text article that's only on the web, and it's free. All these things are free here. Hi, I'm Mike Dapsavage. I'm in the video department of Taunton Press, and I'm a video editor here. And basically, um, editors go out in the field and they generally shoot the videos with the talent and we get the entire videos and we digitize them in and then edit them out sometimes to script, sometimes we just use our own uh, sensibilities and put the thing together and then we basically uh, screen it for the, the producer of it and then we uh, put it, turn it into web video basically, into flash video and upload it to our uh, server. So, you want one of your very own articles published in Fine Woodworking magazine? Yeah, you know, a lot of people think it's difficult to get, to get in the magazine. It's true, it is difficult to get into any magazine. Yeah. Uh, partly it's just timing, making the right pitch at the right time. Uh, you know, but uh, the I tell people just keep trying and send us your ideas. You know, we want original ideas as, as, you know, as well as time-tested things that you've done and tweaked. I mean, a lot of ideas in woodworking are not brand new. You know, they're ideas upon ideas that somebody's developed something. And so it's that little twist to an idea that you come up with that can be the tip or the, uh, the, the full-length article that, that we're looking for. Right. So just, you know, don't give up. Keep trying. And, uh, you know, send us your pictures and sure. let us know. There, we're basically looking for about a one-page write-up about um, what is this process. It's usually going to be a technique. The first time you get in the magazine, it's some kind of a technique, a finish you do, a way you cut a joint, um, how you do some specific thing you do that you think is pretty cool, a jig you made up. Um, so you just tell us about it in your own plain words and uh, 
and send a couple snapshots just or drawings or whatever that help us understand exactly what's going on. That's it. That's it. Don't invest too much in it, but make sure we know through visuals and your description um, what's going on. And then be patient and, uh, and we'll get back to you. Um, you don't have to be a great writer. We'll help you with that. Um, we'll polish up the language if we have to later on in the process. Um, you don't have to shoot the own your own photos, so um, you'll get a visit from our staff. It's kind of fun. We take you out to dinner and we have to spend time <laughs> together in your shop. And um, that's a really fun part of the process, too. So. After seeing the whole process from start to finish, I was quite impressed at just how much work goes into a single article. The fine woodworking staff clearly loves what they do, and I think the magazine reflects that. A big thank you to everyone at Taunton for allowing us to invade their domain and share this information with our viewers. So one of my main jobs... <laughs> okay. Right. Welcome to Mark's House of Table Saws. We got so many table saws, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> How, uh, how long have you had this all stopped? Um, a little over a year. How many uh, times have you set it off? I've lost count. We're here. The weather's shitty. Let's go inside. <laughs> You're lost. Am I lost? Am I scared? You're scared. Am I all alone in the woods, starving? Uh.